Hi everyone, and thank you for joining this conference about the Things Industry Generate Node. My name is Anise Giaimo from ST Microelectronics, and today I will present the main reason to choose the STM32WL for designing the generic node. First of all, I would like to thank the Things Industry for selecting the STM32WL in the generic node. So now let's look at the PCB here on the left side, and we can see right in the middle of the PCB the ST Microelectronics system on chip called the STM32WL. And now, if we look even closer and we open the package to look what is inside, we will see one silicon die that integrates one low power microcontroller plus one long range radio supporting multiple modulation, including LoRa. And this is actually the world's first LoRa enabled SOC. So now let's go through the five main reasons to use the STM32WL for designing the generic node. And let's start with the first one, massive integration. So as we have seen before, the STM32WL integrates one MCU plus one RF transceiver in a single chipset. But what is exactly inside? So an easy way to check that is to look at the part number. So in our case here, if we look at the part number, this is the STM32WL55CCU6. So to know more about it, we can go on ST.com, for instance, and then we can search for the part number STM32WL55CCU6, and we will be at a web page of the product describing and giving an overview of the product. So here we will have the description. Then if we continue, we have a, the, block the, the block diagram of the product. Then we'll have also access to samples availability and a way to order samples, the documentation as well, uh, CAD resources, tools and software, and quality and reliability. All this material will be available at the, in this web page. And we'll be also able to download the data sheet. So if we download the data sheet, then we will have much more information and mo more detail on the part number. And if we go to the section seven, the ordering information, we can understand in detail the meaning of it, each digit of the part number. For instance here, the STM32 is the device family, then product type WL, wireless long range. Then if we keep forward, we will have the device subfamily, so here 55, so Cortex-M4 plus Cortex-M0 plus full set of modulation. So here we know that we have a dual core product with full modulation. Then if we continue, we will have information on the pin count. So here we have 48 pins. Then we'll have the information on the flash, memory flash size with 256K bytes. And then we will know the type of package, which is UFQFPN. Then the temperature range, minus 40 to 85 degrees. So by this way, we can know much more on the product and what are the features inside. So this SOC enables cost saving, simplify development, and a smart PCB design. And let's see how. The first benefit of this massive integration provided by the STM32WL is to reduce the BOM. So indeed, with this system on chip, less external components are required. For instance, there is no need to have an external radio as it is already embedded. Then a single crystal can be used to clock both the CPU and the radio. So that leads to cost saving, and also to simplify the PCB design, means to speed up the time to market. And on top of that, 
the use of a QFN package helps to reduce further the PCB size, so better form factor, and also to simplify the layout by the capability to lay out it on the two-layer PCB only. Well, we have seen the massive integration of the generate node. Let's switch now to the um, second point, which is the longer battery life that provides the WL to the generic node. So in the STM32WL, we have what we call flex power control. This is actually a flexible way to optimize the power consumption depending on the application requirements. For instance, if the application needs to use the CPU to process data, the user can use run mode. And here, the user can reach a power consumption down to 71 microamp per megahertz. Then, when the CPU doesn't need to run, the user can use sleep mode. In this state, the peripheral can still be used, and the power consumption is down to 28 microamp per megahertz. The wake up time to go back to run mode is quite fast, it's just few cycles only. Then to reduce further the power consumption, the user can select between stop, standby, shutdown, depending on the requirement, on the retention, on the wake up time and the peripherals to be used. And all of that flexible architecture helps the generic node to reach more than two years battery life. Well, let's take a basic example of a typical sensor application and let's see how the STM32WL can help to reduce the power consumption for each state. So here we have uh, a state diagram describing the behavior of the application. So we have at the first state, we have the sensing where we are acquiring the data coming from the sensor. Then we have data processing to uh, that the CPU handle and process the data. We wait for the next data. If there is no any more data to acquire, we can transmit it. And then we wait for the next event. So let's see how this can be translated into STM32WL state. So for the sensing one, we can use the sleep mode. In this mode, we will have the CPU unclocked, so in low power state, as well as the radio in low power. And then we will be able to benefit from the batch mode acquisition to have a direct memory access from the peripheral to the SRAM, means that the data coming from the sensors can be automatically stored into the SRAM using the batch acquisition mode. And here we can benefit from the uh, low, low current consumption of 35 microamp per megahertz. Then for the data processing, here we can use the run mode because we have to process the data. So we have to use the CPU and the run mode is the most adapted for that. So in that way, we, have, uh, we are reducing the consumption because we do not need to have the radio. We can switch off the peripherals as, as well and we benefit from the dynamic efficiency thanks to the internal SMPS and the voltage scaling. Then when we wait for the next data, waiting for the, during this state, we can use stop mode. And here we can reduce the power consumption down to one microamp, keeping the full retention. So if then we have the transmit state. In this state, we can use the radio active mode here we have the radio on and the stack running on the Cortex M0 Plus on. And here we can use a TX active of 87 milliamp. Then when we wait for the next event, here we can use even lower power consumption mode, which is a standby mode. We keep 32 kilobyte of retention and we can reduce down to 390 nanoamp. So I invite you to look at the application node 5568, uh, which describe the low power feature of the STM32WL series microcontrollers. Okay, so we have just seen the long battery life benefits. 
let's now switch to the next topic, the sub gigahertz radio and its worldwide capability. So the generic node supports multiband operation. It is in line with European frequency and US frequency. It can go up to 22 dBm power output and it has an adjustable output power. All of this is achieved thanks to the STM32WL. So let's see how. The radio in the STM32WL provides a linear frequency from 150 MHz to 960 MHz. So that gives a full flexibility to reach each country's regulation requirement. Then multimodulation. The radio supports LoRa modulation, but not only. It can also support FSK, MSK, and BPSK. So here, with one single radio, it supports all the use cases. Then dual output power. So here, the radio can support low power output. So here, this is an output optimized for low power, for low power consumption. And there is a high power output can reach up to 22 dBm. Then here we have some figures about the reception of the radio. So we can see the sensitivity, the LoRa sensitivity, for instance, that can go down to minus 148 dBm. So that gives an order of idea of how long the range can be. And the RX, which is also optimized in terms of power consumption. Now, for the transmission, we also see the benefits of having the dual output power. For instance, at 10 dBm, we can reach down to 15 mA. I advise you to have a look to the application note 5407 that gives all the guidelines to optimize an RF board layout based on STM32WL to reach the best RF performance. Okay, so now let's switch to the next topic, which is the advanced security. So as we have seen before, the generic node use the dual core version of the WL. In this version, we have some advanced security features that are described here in this slide. So we have the what we call the secure key management services. Here, this is actually a dedicated memory area that can be used to store the key and to manage the key actually. So it can be used as any type of key and any type of secure object as well. Then we have the secure boot. So the secure boot has two roles. One is to ensure that the device boots from the right secure memory location. And the second one is to ensure that each application firmware is authenticated before being executed. And then finally, we have our, what we call our crypto, crypto library. So here, the crypto library benefits from our hardware accelerator inside the STM32WL. One other benefit from the dual core implementation of the STM32WL is the firmware isolation. So here we have an example of a LoRaWAN stack running on the secure Cortex M0 Plus core of the WL and the application layer on the Cortex M4 core. In such architecture, there is an hardware isolation between the RF stack and the application layers. So an advantage of this is to increase the safety because the application cannot impact the RF stack. But there is also another advantage when it comes to certification. So if, for instance, a user certifies the stack running on the Cortex M0 Plus, a modification of the application layer will not require a full certification cost because there is a hardware isolation. So that's a really interesting architecture for users that want to update the application on the field without paying the cost of a new certification. So now, here we go with the last point that provides the STM32WL to the generic node is the ecosystem. 
So having the STM32WL in the generic node give access to the full STM32 ecosystem, including ST software development tools. It starts with the STM32 CubeMX that helps to configure and to generate the code with a user-friendly graphic user interface. And then also it's about uh, ID, so with the STM32 Cube ID, which is free of charge. And then when it comes to programming and monitoring, there is the STM32 Cube programmer that provides an easy way to flash firmware in the device. Then we have the STM32 Cube Monitor in order to perform advanced tests of the sub gigahertz application. So for instance, it can perform multi-modulation commands, sub gigahertz RF tests, it can send protocol commands and perform LoRaWAN tests as well. And then in our software ecosystem, of course, there is the LoRaWAN stack available free of charge in our firmware package, STM32 Cube WL, that is available online. Okay, so thank you uh, for joining this conference. So we have seen the five main reasons to choose the STM32WL in the generic node, starting with the massive integration, the extension on the battery life, the sub gigahertz radio to reach the worldwide capability, the advanced security and the ecosystem. So now, what next? So I invite you to join the workshop of Alec Bath that will show how to port the STM32 QWL firmware library to the generic node sensor edition hardware. Thank you.